That first part, that first like six weeks where you're formulating your plan is the same wherever you may be shooting it, I think. And then certainly once I'd kind of presented those ideas to John and John was kind of on the same belief that we thought we were going to go for a kind of very desaturated, washed out, largely blue palette for our Russia stuff. It would be far more primary for our American stuff. And then we would go with more pastels for our Japanese stuff. Once we'd kind of all settled on, on that way forward, then, then you started to knit how we were going to try and make the locations work, you know, whether it was going to be in Glasgow. We were originally, we did look in at, to be in London and Budapest, and before then it was going to be in, Ber in Berlin. So we, we'd got our, our kind of our, our MO for the film, and then we just had to try and marry them with the spaces that we were able to find. When you read the film, it talks about, you know, Hank saying that when he was first over in, or maybe that was the, the documentary that I watched, Yes, it was a documentary I watched about Hank when he was over in Russia. He said they'd literally like switch the color off. It was just became all gray. So you 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 have an immediate starting point from the documentary and the research and the script. I mean, it kind of designs itself really. You don't really have to force it in one direction because it just kind of sits very nicely together. And so so very quickly, John and I were on the same page in terms of where we wanted to take it. When Alvin came in, we talked about whether or not the desaturation was going to be done in camera or that he was going to take it out in post. Um, so we did a few camera tests and, and worked out that, you know, there were some, some reds actually that wouldn't work. So we had to be quite careful with our Soviet flag regs because when he desaturated it, they would go a bit brown. So we had to make sure that there were some colors that we, we went slightly brighter knowing that we were going to turn them down in post. And there were some things that 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 kind of behaved more or less as you would imagine if they were if the color was taken out so we we used a lot of blues a lot of grays um the oranges became a bit more pastel -y. we tried to stick a, steer clear certainly for exterior russian stuff of any warm tones so there weren't really any yellows aside from our soviet flags there weren't kind of reds or oranges and we just tried to cool it down all the time for that Kremlin was going to go really white, as per all of the reference, and it was lots of gold and red carpet. Valentin, we were going to go with a bit more wood finished, and it was going to be blue carpet. And then Elog was going to be a lot more earthy because, because well, they were the, the, the bottom of the pile. Um, so, um, so we looked for we looked at the Glasgow City Chambers, we looked at Edinburgh City Chambers. Um, and there was another location that we were looking at for our interior Kremlin, but nothing quite hit the kind of the opulence level that we wanted for the Kremlin. Although Gorbachev, is, Gorbachev isn't quite like that. Um, and then when we found the Signet Library, it was just perfect because it was it was absolutely stunning, over the top, very opulent. And if you think about the, you, you, don't think you've, you haven't seen the other spaces, but we've got this huge disparity in, in the kind of level of opulence for the film. We've got kind of where... Alexi gets thrown, which is kind of he's guarded by the KGB in this little in this squalor, and then we've got the the Kremlin. It's it's a huge huge spread.